As black men, y'all don't feel a little bit of responsibility? No, not all of us. Because we're not all responsible for the children that's being born in this community. 70% of the children in the black community is being born to single mothers. Think about that. That means that a percentage of them have to be born to those in committed and married relationships. So the numbers are 30% of the black community is married and having children in those marriages. So let's make it simple. 10 men, 10 women. They're going to have babies, right? A percentage of them are going to have babies. 70% of the time, they're having babies with only 18% of the men in the black community. Now, how does that make sense? Because 51% of the men in the black community are single and childless. So these women are choosing to have children with men that already have children. They're sharing this man and they're doing so willingly. Why? Because he meet her atavistic mating standards. Six feet, six inches, six figures. Or at the very least, he looks like he has some wealth or status. Dr. Umar said that you know, there's, there's a problem because there's a, a Pookie and a Ray Ray in the mating selection. So that's everybody else's problem. All the men's responsible because there is a Pookie and a Ray Ray that, is, that does exist. That's asinine. What do we do? Kill the Pookies and the Ray Rays? No. They're there for a reason. They exist because there is a desire for them. Women are choosing those guys. So at the very least, men who exhibit those behaviors. What? We supposed to get rid of all the stoves just because some of the kids are going to burn themselves? Come on. Doesn't make sense. They simply need to be better and choose better or accept the consequences of their action. It's not our fault. And neither is it our responsibility. Because according to the CDC, black men are doing really well. And in fact, we should be teaching classes on how to be fathers in any community. Because we're, we're the best. That's Oprah. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> Look at the CDC. So no, it's not our responsibility to take care of these children. It's their responsibility as women to make better decisions. Make better decisions. And what's the return on investment for taking care of another man's responsibility? You don't get the confidence of knowing that your legacy is going to continue on. You don't even get a thank you for donating your time, attention, and resources. My recommendation of the 50% of the black men in the black community who's single and childless, go to a place where you don't have to sift through this mess. They've been conned by the Cardi B's. They've been maligned by the Nicki Milages. They've been uh, sucked in by the Sukiyanas. It's pointless. Go to a place where you can start fresh, anew, a culture that is built on something more than just the 70% of women going to only 20% of men. You shouldn't have to deal with that. You are worth much more than having to do this. Get your passports. Go to other places. Go to Guyana. Go to Madagascar. Go to other places, the DR, the Cubas, the you know Colombias. Go to places where you are celebrated, not just tolerated. That's my recommendation. We're having a conversation, literally, of taking used product off the shelf, dusting it off, and you investing your time, attention, and resources into it to make it better. How does that make sense? And we're the only culture who does that. It makes no sense. Am I wrong? If you're married with kids and you want a hot wife, but you're not giving her adequate time and money to go to the gym or get her hair done or helping her on her journey from postpartum to being her like hot mom summer, you don't actually want a hot wife. Judas Priest.
everything is a man's fault, isn't it? So if a woman has a baby, gains weight, gets out of shape, it's the man's fault for not getting her the gym membership or giving her the time that she needs, get a babysitter so she can go to the gym. Okay, when I was pregnant, I gained 100 pounds. 100 pounds, it was a nightmare. I was like a new person after I pushed that baby out. But as we all know, babies sleep most of the day. Most of the day they're asleep. I've heard 16 hours, 20 hours, most of that time is the baby sleeping. So I know, even with all the other things that you have to do, that you can squeeze out 30 minutes of body weight exercises while your baby sleeps next to you. I used to do that. I had her in the little bassinet and I would get on the floor, start doing exercises with my body weight and to get the aerobic boost, I had a stationary bicycle. I would pedal right near her or I would jog in place. And within one year's time, I lost a hundred pounds, no money, no gym time. You can do it right with the baby next to you. Additionally, when you have a newborn baby, it's so much easier to work out from home because, well, despite the money, whatever the gym fee is, $50 a month or whatever, there's also the time factor. If you work out at home, you don't have to get dressed and you don't have to have travel time and you don't have to be away from your baby. So this way you could be right there hearing every burp, every hiccup, every little bit of colic. It, it really kills me how women try to make it seem like having a baby is 24 hours. That baby's asleep a lot. And a lot of those other things like washing bottles and changing diapers, it doesn't take the full day. There's still so many things you can do. You can even have hobbies. There's a little joke in one of my videos that one day women are going to start complaining about men breathing. And then a bunch of guys contacted me and said, it's a real thing. Women are really complaining about that. So I looked it up on TikTok and <laughs> what I found is just unbelievable. It is a thing. Look at this little compilation. Boyfriend air. It's a real thing. Men are breathing more heavy than women. Because when my boyfriend sleeps over next to me and he's just like breathing, I, I feel it. And I feel like his, his hot air, like the, the humidity makes my hair greasy and disgusting and also my makeup and everything. So I think it's the breathing. Boyfriend air is a theory that centers around how being in the presence of a boyfriend or a male partner affects the hygiene and presentability of their female partner. I feel like if I would like sleep at my boyfriend's for like a day, two days, two nights, whatever, I would turn into this like monster. Is it because they're dirty? I think like they're just, they let off this like humid air. Greasy hair, oily skin, smelly. I'm telling you, it's like a sweaty, sleepy, sticky air. No, I'm with you. I'm, I agree with you on this. I'm going to read what this just says about boyfriend. <laughs> okay. When you go to a boy's house, you just get ugly. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's something in the air. Yeah. Like as soon as you get a boyfriend, still a rat. Mm, yeah. At your own house, single. Huh. Hottie, do you believe in boyfriend air? I do. I think I think there's some firm logic behind that. Boyfriend air is such a real thing. Boyfriend air is basically when you're with somebody for so long that you start smelling like them. Or for example, everything's always messy all of a sudden. I am so happy people are now talking about boyfriend air because I actually thought I was going crazy. For I spent a lot of time this past summer at my boyfriend's apartment in New York. I remember taking a full body shower and the next morning waking up and being like, I feel so dirty. My hair was getting greasy like crazy. My skin was looking different, like everything. My makeup wasn't staying on right. And a few months ago, I started seeing all these TikToks about boyfriend air. Once this OnlyFans trend passes or they age out and their lives are disasters, I guarantee you they will find a way to blame men and the patriarchy. It'll most likely go something like, 
Women were unable to break through the glass ceiling and the only way they could do that is via sex. Poor women, how unfortunate that they had to sell their bodies. A woman could never make such mistakes on her own, could she? It'll come down to, if men didn't pay us, we wouldn't have done it. Because everything that goes wrong in a woman's life is always a man's fault. Because women are innocent. They're only doing these jobs because they're being pushed into it. They're being deluded. Yes, but not by men, by women, by feminism that tells women that being sexual, using your body is empowerment. I believe that day will come because as we already know, women don't like accountability always have to shift the blame past the potato i've objectified women so much that now it's like almost impossible for them to even be able to perceive the value that a woman actually has let's make this statement a bit more correct okay that would be some men are guilty of doing that not just men in general some men they try to tell you all women are the same when we as girls know that that is far from the truth but who exactly is they you will only see a woman's true value when you're able to see her through a lens that is not objectifying her. Again, there are already a great many men that already do know and understand what a woman's true value is. It is only some men that continue to objectify women and do not in fact see them as equals. However, it really does not help when there are a select few women that actually seem to get their validation, if not a lot of gratification from objectifying themselves. Black men, stop arguing with these women. If you can't tell her anything, leave her alone. Let's give more attention to women who are open-minded and actually want to understand and grow. This is one of the reasons we die so early for us and shit. Stop it. Pay attention. Walk away. Walk.